Dear students, in this module, I am going to summarize the entire landscape of protein structure visualization, their classification and comparisons. We have studied several algorithms for each one of them and now I would like to give you an overview as a summary. Towards structural visualization, the first thing that we need to understand was that why do we need to visualize the protein structures? You know that the protein structures are 3D objects and after you visualize them, you can actually see how this structure may behave in the biological system. So it is very important to visualize the proteins towards identifying their functional characteristics, that is, the domains. Next, which atoms were used to construct these visual proteins? So towards visualizing the proteins, you need to see the coordinates, the Cartesian coordinates or the X, Y and Z positions of each alpha carbon. By looking at the position of the alpha carbons in the backbone of the protein, you can actually reconstruct the 3D architecture of the entire protein backbone. By doing that, you can visualize the entire protein. But how do we get to these X, Y and Z coordinates for each alpha carbon? To find them out, you have the PDB resource with you. The protein data bank provides you with the alpha carbon coordinates besides other information for every protein that is there and whose structure is known. Next, the structural classification. So once you have visualized these proteins, you may want to classify them into various types depending upon their function. So towards that, structural classification is very important. The underlying theme is that the structural artifacts of a protein determine its functions. So you know that a protein may contain multiple functional domains and if two different domains are there in two different proteins, then they perform two very different functions. However, if the same domain is there in two different proteins, then it may be performing the same function. So therefore, there is a need to classify proteins towards uniformity in their function and predicting them as well. There are several hierarchies of protein classification such as the SCOP, the CAT and so on and so forth. So you can have the class, the architecture, the topology and the homology for various proteins and classify them accordingly as well. Now, if you have classified the proteins after visualizing them into different categories, you are fine. But what if you don't know the structure of a protein? So you cannot obviously visualize it and you cannot therefore classify it as well. To meet that challenge, you need to predict the structure of that protein. So towards the prediction of structures, you can use the chow fassman algorithm. So the first part of protein structure prediction is to predict the secondary structures that form the overall structure of the protein. If you can predict the structure of the protein, then you can of course uh, visualize it, you can classify it and you can see what kind of function that protein may be performing. Why do we need to have the prediction algorithms in the first place? The reason for that is that the experimental determination of the overall protein structure is very difficult and it's very expensive as well. So, given these difficulties, we only have over 100,000 structures in the PDB. While if you look at the Uniprod database, you have several hundred thousands protein sequences. This is the reason why protein structure prediction can be very useful. You can predict 
the structures for those sequences whose structure is not known. So once you are able to predict the structure, then you can have the function of the protein. So what kind of a function this protein performs? And if you can answer that, then it opens the doors to understanding the overall biological property of the entire tissue or the system. So in conclusion, the protein structure visualization, classification and prediction ex equips us with the evaluation, the functional evaluation of proteins. The fundamental objective of this exercise was to understand the function of the proteins or to position ourselves towards that goal. This is very important towards understanding diseases such as cancer, diabetes and so on. And more so, you can design the drugs specifically for each one of these diseases if you understand the protein structure and the function underlying them.